Joel, appreciate you taking a few minutes of your day. It's been yeah. good catching up with you this week. And yeah, yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cool. Cool. Appreciate it. Uh, Joel, I think when I think of yourself in Tulsa, you guys, let's, congratulations on the award again, by the Thank way. You. But it, it makes sense. You guys are leaders in the industry, so proactive on areas. But give us a little background on uh, Tulsa Sports Commission. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've personally been with uh, the Sports Commission, running the Sports Commission for almost going on four years here in January. Um, you know, we've been around and uh, established for over 25 years now. Um, you know, we're one of the original members of Sports ETA, uh, NESC at the time. Um, but yeah, it, uh, Tulsa's come a long way. Um, you know, we're, we're, I say all the time, we're kind of in the middle of our renaissance right now. You know, 15 years ago, no one was coming to Tulsa. Um, we were a oil and gas community. Um, our downtown was very corporate. Um, we didn't have a lot to do. I think we had one hotel, we had a spaghetti warehouse, uh, <laughs> and uh, that was about it. It was hard to get to, uh, small, uh, at the time, almost localized airport. Um, and uh, we had a couple people in our community that said, hey, this can become something great. Um, we just need all of this corporate uh, and large companies to really get involved in some way or, or form. And so um, it kind of really started with uh, a, a few di different entities. Um, you know, uh, the George Kaiser Foundation, uh, which is one of the largest uh, entities, nonprofit uh, in the state of Oklahoma, uh, stepped up because uh, they're from Tulsa and said, hey, let's start investing into the community. Um, and then from there, we had a, a bunch of Tulsas that said, I want to do the same thing. Um, you know, one famous example is uh, the McNelly's brothers, uh, the McNelly's family um, decided, hey, Oklahoma City and Tulsa, there's no restaurants here. There's no nothing. Okay. Why don't we change that? We're going to go into both Oklahoma City and Tulsa, buy as much real estate as we can afford and start opening restaurants, uh, different uh, styles, brands, whatnot. And that's exactly what they did. And they sparked... Uh, uh, something in Tulsans to say, hey, we could start investing in this community too. Um, you know, over the last, I would say, seven or eight years, we've had an influx of 90 new restaurants in our downtown. Um, we've had also, uh, you know, 15 years ago, the city broke ground on the BOK Center, which is our 19,000 seat arena. Uh, created our arena district. Uh, also took our AA affiliate baseball team. Moved that from out in you know um, the surrounding areas to downtown as well, created an arena district. And so Tulsa's had a lot of growth. Uh, during the pandemic, we finally just reached our millionth resident. Um, okay. So Tulsa's growing leaps and bounds. We have an international airport, world-class attractions. Um, again, we've kind of come become the total package. Uh, what a TV show, Tulsa King. Right? Tulsa King, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're really fastly becoming known as a film and music. You know, people ask me all the time, what's Tulsa known for? Um, for a while, I didn't know what to say when I first got here, but as I've uh, really developed in this role and seen Tulsa, you know, music, arts, and culture, that's what Tulsa is known for. Um, and we do it really well, um, especially on the music side. Uh, but as you mentioned in the film, we've had a lot of success lately with the Tulsa King. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it, it, that's been an a, a interesting process. No matter where I go, people ask me about it, um, about, you know, is the Mayo a real place? Yes, is real hotel? Is the center of the universe real? Yes. Um, you know, they didn't really alter Tulsa at all, um, although they made it seem like we were kind of out in the middle of nowhere, which isn't true. Um, and the airport's an hour from downtown, which is only less than six minutes from downtown <laughs> and okay. all that stuff. But, you know, we've got a lot of success right now. We just had Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, which is slated to, you know, be one of the largest award winners at this year's Oscars um, and yeah the the film and music side is just booming right now nice, nice. well you're also booming on the sports side because you have the new arena complex coming in right yeah we've got a lot of uh, things happening on the sports side uh, that's really exciting um, you know obviously you mentioned the awards uh, we won several this year including sports commission of the year of uh, 500,000 and above uh, which was a huge honor for us I think we're one of the smallest markets to ever win that award um, but it's really a testament to to what's been happening uh, the development side of things have been phenomenal um, you just mentioned uh, we Street ice center uh, we've got a, a new two sheet hockey arena that's opening um, prior to this we've only ever had one sheet of ice and you know if kids wanted to play hockey they were going to texas or to st louis or you know up to kansas city um, so we're really excited for that project uh, beyond that we just announced uh, a new 10 field turf complex, uh, Cal Ripkins coming to Tulsa. Um, so we're really excited about that uh, development happening. 
In addition to that, our waterfront, uh, the Arkansas River runs right through our downtown. And we're in the process uh, from a state uh, and city perspective of building a low river dam system that will allow us to have an eight mile stretch of river um, from downtown uh, through our suburbs. And that's really gonna be a game changer uh, for us as the Arkansas River, if you're not familiar with it, uh, through Tulsa, it's basically a drainage canal currently. Sometimes it has water in it, sometimes it doesn't. So okay. to consistently have water is gonna be a big deal. Uh, looking in, you know, at the last year stuff, what? I don't know, how many event owners do you work with? I know. Oh my gosh, right yeah, I mean, to give you, you know, we're, we're coming off, you know, back to back years of the biggest tourism years in Tulsa's history, in the state of Oklahoma history. Um, and, you know, those numbers include, you know, this last year we did 180,000 rooms just off of sports alone. Okay. Um, you know, we brought in, you know, 3 million plus people through these events to Tulsa. Um, you know, when it was all said and done, I think, uh, you know, lead wise we were well over 150 uh leads per year um but yeah client wise at any given time uh throughout the year i would say we're working with anywhere between uh 35 and 75 um but yeah all entail i think our portfolio is well over 3500 uh different rights holders across all all you know sports it's not just you know baseball soccer football you know hockey the core but you know we're doing things we're going to accept the host this next year in march uh, the world breaking classic which is a national international break dancing competition okay. um you know we're looking at beyond just uh, your typical core sports and um, you know one of the things I'm really proud about the um, Sports Commission of the Year Award uh, more than anything is that we utilized over 24 different facilities uh, in Tulsa so it wasn't just like hey we're using our convention center arena you know whatever it is we kind of look at uh, the the full picture when we're trying to bring events to town so with that many event donors that many yeah. facilities the amount of hotels like what, what's how do you keep it all straight? What, what's some of the toughest challenges you face with? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think if you talk to any destination, I think, you know, we're all still kind of recovering from the pandemic. I think at one time we had a staff of eight, um, you know, up until March of this year, it was just me running the sports commission uh, for the last couple of years. Um, you know, we've added a, a, a great asset to our team, Alex Brown. He's our new national sports sales manager. Um, I was able to track him down from Chicago like I did. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, time um, just to, you know, make sure that we're, you know, creating those relationships because that's what it's all about. Um, it's not just about economic impact. And, you know, we're looking at things more than just room nights. Um, you know, the relationship is really important to us. And, um, but yeah, there's a, you know, how do you balance work life, right? There's, we're, we're more than just, you know, what we do for a living. And um, I don't know if I really, I think I'm dancing around this because I don't really have a good answer for you. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, being organized helps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Um, we each have our own uh, system for organization and, you uh, yeah, I think uh, SimpleView has been extremely helpful in that regard. We utilize Asana, um, Teams, uh, you name it. I think we, we have at least uh, six to eight different systems that we use to help organize our yeah. team. And uh, again, it's it's been extremely helpful to have those tools. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And then going into 2024, mm -hmm. what's... Uh, or even past that, because I know we were always trying to forward think here. Where where do you see the sport tourism industry going? Is it going to be a lot more focused? You mentioned a lot of tech softwares there. Do you yeah. see even more focus on tech? And then obviously never forgetting that customer service hospitality. But where do you see this industry going as we progress? Yeah, the tech side is interesting. I, I think, you know, it started a couple of years ago, but it's, it's really, uh, if you're not collecting data and utilizing and translating it to your community, you're you're behind the curve right now. Um, you know, we were one of the first organizations to hire a data scientist. Right. Um, we have one on our staff, um, and Patty. Uh, she's a uh, she's a rock star. I mean, she's she's our our secret weapon, um, and she's uh, an unbelievable resource. But you know, the the data 
I think that was a common phrase. Ever, you know, you're only as good as the data uh, that you have. But I think being able to translate it uh, and integrate it into your community and, and outward facing too, I think that's the future of this this industry. I mean, if you're not utilizing tools like Zartico or Arrivalist or you know whatever the other tools are, the geofence your events and city and collecting that additional data, you're you're going to be behind. Um, and I, I truly think that the future is going to be exactly that. I know um, you guys were talking about, uh, Event Connect was talking about earlier in this show about utilizing, you know, AI. You know, we're in the process of looking at chatbots for our website uh, and utilizing, you know, technology that way. And again, I think this is where the, this industry is going to be going as well. It's not about taking away, you know, jobs from actual humans, but I think it's an enhancement because, um, again, you know, we're I think if you talk to any of these destinations, which, you know, I do on a regular basis, we're all kind of crunched on time. You talk about organization and how do you keep it all straight? Um, but these technologies are, are here to help us. Um, as organizations, because I think the general public just thinks we've got a dozen people on our staff that sure. are doing all these different things, but the yeah. reality is it's just us, uh, you know, a small team doing it. Um, so again, these technologies help us in the long run. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I you know, I'm with Event Connect now just over eight years, and when I started, I mean, this is such a relationship game. It, it really is. There's so many great people, but everyone is more, you know, it's that customer service relationships, relationships, relationships. And, I'm not saying that's gone away, but it, I have seen you know, working for a technology company, okay, how does this yeah. fit in? And now there just seems to be this crazy demand for it that we need to work, keep the relationships going, but we need efficiencies. We need places to have it organized and uh, track the hotel impact reports. Hotels have the visibility, uh, so it's not off a bajillion spreadsheets, for example. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, that that way of thinking is dead. Um, you know, you, we've got to be able to tell our story and it's got to be able to be told in a way that people understand it nowadays. And I think, yeah, spreadsheets and economic impact, quite honestly, who who cares? I mean, yeah, we did $350 million of economic impact. What does that really mean, right? right. Um, but if we're giving, you know, local kids an opportunity to, you know, be seen by a college coach to go to college, or, if, you know, we're able to, you know, tell Tulsa's story about being, you know, a resilient city, a, a family-friendly city, you know, with world-class attractions, and, you know, beyond that uh, is, you know, just as important. But, you know, collecting this additional data too is, is equally important. I mean, to be able to go to your community leaders and say, you know, because I think the biggest, you know, stigma around economic impact is, well, how did you get to the number? And everyone right. uses their calculator differently, and, yep. you know, but if you're able to actually show, hey, this is what people were spending money on. These are the times they were spending money. You know, these are the businesses that they were frequently. I mean, the more data that you can provide, the, the better off you're going to be. And especially from a funding mechanism, too, because, again, it's just data's king right now. Yeah. And I. I it, the workshop that you helped us uh, put on there and gave some great feedback on uh, whenever the, what that was Monday. Yeah. I thought one of the interesting things, I believe it was Roland that spoke up and we were talking the relationships and we had structured the, the topic was how uh, cemented in data, how CVs and event owners are uh, cemented in using data. And I thought Roland had such a great point that it's like, I don't know if cemented is the word that we should be using, but how we're using this and support, the data is supporting our decisions and we need that as the back spot. So it's not all the data, but it's truly supporting uh, the decisions we make, building those relationships with the different groups. So I couldn't the key takeaways I think I took away from. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. I think they kind of go hand in hand nowadays. I, you know, part of the relationship building is you know providing that data back. I mean, I think you know a lot of these uh, event uh, rights holders or organizers, um, you know, they don't have the bandwidth to collect this data. You know, they're heavily relying on us to do that. And um, you know, it's one of the services we offer. You know, we're very transparent with other communities. We want. We want to be almost the, the thought leaders in this, you know, um, in this arena. And I think, you know, if another destination calls me, which happens all the time, says, hey, can you provide the economic report? We're trying to bring the same event to our community. We're always open to that. Yes. Yeah. You know, we, we won't get into the details of how we worked our deal, but, you know, sure. we'll we'll provide the data of, um, you know, what happened with the event. Um, because again, we believe in the data that we're producing and we know that it's accurate. Um, and then we'll also provide that to the organizer as well so that they could take it to other destinations and, and sell their product and bring their product to those destinations. Cool, cool. Yeah. Speak, I know how much you have those great relationships with other CVBs and sport commissions. I've noticed in my job last year, um, a real big intake in CVBs using us, uh, whether it's just to get access to the hotel impact report, 
uh, running surveys through us, uh, and obviously even sometimes when they are doing the hotel contracting. Again, you've been a great partner for us, recommending us uh, different ways we've always been brainstorming. Yeah. Um, any recommendations you could share of maybe how other CVs and sport commissions could utilize a partnership like we have? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I, you know, we were talking about it yesterday in the session too. I think uh, whatever it is, people have a stigma about third parties and you guys really aren't a third party. Um, you know, and again, I think that term needs to go away in this industry. Um, you know, if anything, you know, CBB Sports, we're technically a third party. We're kind of the middleman, right? Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, you're just a, a you know, one stop shop. And I think it's, you know, just as we are as well. But, you know, it, it's really crucial at this stage. You know, when I first got in this industry, you know, 12, 13 years ago, you know, housing companies were around, but all they did was just housing. Um, and quite honestly, it wasn't as sophisticated as it is today. And it was just easier for us to handle it internally. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, with the volume that I mentioned that we're doing, it's it's near impossible for, for me or my staff to constantly be working with hotels and, you know, tracking rebates, commissions, registration. I mean, there's so many moving parts now with events. And uh, again, we just can't, we don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. Um, so creating these types of partnerships, whether it's, you know, with Event Connect or an, another company that's out there um, is extremely advantageous to, to me as a destination, a DMO to say, hey, you know, Again, we can't do it all. We, we need this assistance. But, you know, you guys have been great. I think, you know, uh, one in particular, our Route 66 Marathon, which is one of the longest running marathons in um, you know, the state of Oklahoma. And, you know, they utilize, you know, your system not only for housing, but for registration. And, um, you know, it's been an extreme tool for me to see, you know, prior to us partnering, we were basically just guessing about where people were coming from. And, you know, utilizing your tool and just going on and seeing the heat map and where everyone it's, it's, are coming from. And, you know, we, we share that information with our board and with everyone, um, you know, so much so that we've actually upped our investment with that event over the years oh, because, cool okay. you know, we weren't really sure. We were just giving money to give money to the event, but we, we didn't really truly understand the impact it was having from an economic standpoint. Yeah. And again, utilizing your system and, and seeing everything and the benefit, uh, uh, not only from the registration side, but from the hotel side. And then again, just from the visitor side, it was really a game changer for us to see how big of an event that really is. Yeah, there's been some nice growth at that event too, I've noticed. And, um, you know, getting the right hotels, yeah. uh, Destiny uh, working yeah. with her there. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm being a marathon runner. You, you, you sold me well on Tulsa today, and, and seeing that event grow, yeah. I, I think I, I got to put this on my list. Great. Well, no, we we definitely appreciate it. Cool. Well, hey Joel, we always yeah. appreciate your uh, forward thinking, your support, you. and uh, your advocacy in this industry. So thank you. Likewise. And, uh, thank thanks you. Thanks for a few minutes. Yeah, appreciate it.